presentation of WIDAConnect.com. This presentation will specifically deal with the roles, responsibilities of a delegated administrator. So the delegated administrator uh, is responsible for setting up users, establishing passwords, setting roles. The delegated administrator needs to go through training um, in order to receive their login and password from WIDA. And once you have your login and password from WIDA, you'll go into the system, you'll set up your users, and then you will get the, uh, the users their login and, and temporary password. Um, so I'll begin, and I'll kind of take a quick walk through uh, how to add users and how to, how to set roles and permissions and things of that nature. So I'll log in. And when you first log in, you come to the pipeline screen. Now the link or option button for managing users is here, manage users. And when you first log in, your first time, um, you may see a list of existing employees at your organization. Uh, a lot of your employees might already be listed here. Now, anybody who has had any type of WIDA activity, uh, been attached, had their name tied to a WIDA transaction or a WIDA loan going back to probably April of 2014 will be listed here. Um, so you might see people that no longer work for your institution, and you might see people that they're listed here, but you as the delegated administrator don't feel that they will uh, be accessing the weeda.com portal. So uh, there's two ways to handle that. Now, if, if they truly no longer work for your organization, feel free to inactivate those users. Uh, it's essentially just clicking their name and going to the credentials tab and saying inactivate. Um, or if the, or I should say, however, if the individual is listed here, they still work for your company, but you know when you look at their their uh, name and you, th you think, oh, so-and-so doesn't really do anything that is going to um, require them to use the WIDA Connect portal. Um, we ask that you still leave them active. Uh, leave them on the list. Just don't release their username and sign on to them. Um, we do need certain names in the system, especially if they still work for your institution for tracking purposes. So we again, we ask as long as they still work for your company, leave them active. Now, you might also be looking at this list and thinking to yourself, well, I need to set up uh, three people here. How do I do that? So I click the Add New button, and the data entry pieces are very basic, uh, very self-explanatory. Everything that you need to enter is identified with one of these little green R's. Basic stuff, first name, last name, phone number, email address. Um, if you go to the Credentials tab, this is their... This would be their login and temporary password for the WIDA Connect portal. Um, you'll leave this marked, should default, uh, must change password at next login. So again, you're giving them their login name, which we recommend as the email address, as well as their uh, temporary password. And then password should expire every 60 days, and I believe, again, this is defaulted. Now, when you get to the roles, loan access, and permissions tab, this is very company channel specific. Uh, workflow specific. So I can't really go into too much depth here, but I'll briefly explain these and kind of give you an example. Um, roles, you're essentially setting up the role of the person uh, that you're adding. So whether it be a loan officer, a processor, um, you could set up a processor as an individual. You could also set up the processor as a group. So if you have a group of individuals that, that form like a processing team, they share the same email address, feel free to set up the team. Um, they share the same login, um, use that email address as their contact email address uh, for their profile in the system, um, either way. So, and the same thing essentially goes with uh, secondary. You Secondary is essentially the equivalent of a lock desk. If you have um, if, if you have a situation, a workflow where your loan officers don't lock, lock loans and register loans, they send an internal request to um, a lock desk at your organization, you would be setting up your lock desk people or, again, team as uh, this secondary role. And then lastly, another 
uh, group that could be, again, individuals or team would be your post closers, and your post closers are people who, after the loans close, they prepare, depending on channel, they'll either prepare origination and closing docs or just closing docs for submission to WIDA. Moving along to access, um, if you're setting up a loan officer and a processor and uh, the loan officer, you know, they have pretty much essentially just work with their loans, they lock and register their loans, and then they have a processor assigned to them, and the processor just works with that particular loan officer's loans. You might want to set those individuals up as with individual access so they can only see loans that are assigned to them. However, when you start talking about groups, um, teams, people who work with all transactions that are occurring at your organization, such as a processing team, um, your secondary or lock desk or your post closers, if those are departments and they close, they send in the closing docs for all loan officers and processors throughout your entire organization. You might want to set those people up with corporate access. Lastly, with permissions, um, you're essentially identifying who can create loans and who can't. So your loan officers, if they register and lock, obviously they would need to create loans and the same thing with your um, you might have your processors doing that, again, depending on your, your workflow. Um, if, you, if you run everything through a lock desk, you'll probably want to give your secondary people that ability. Post closures, probably not, but again, um, try not to get too specific. So um, this really depends on your institution's workflow. If you have questions when you're setting up your users and going through these steps, if you uh, want a consultation with WIDA um, or just to kind of discuss how these individuals and these settings fit in with your organization's workflow, just give us a call. Uh, moving along to relationships, this again is um, doesn't need to be completed, um, but it depends on your organization's workflow. Essentially, if you're setting up, um, an example I can give is if you're setting up a loan officer in the broker channel and loan officer A always has processor A as their processor, when you're setting up Loan Officer A, you could identify Processor A as Loan Officer A's processor to where every time Loan Officer A creates a loan, uh, Processor A is automatically assigned. Uh, again, completely determined by your workflow, might work for you, might not, doesn't have to be completed. Um, licenses tab, this is if you're setting up a Loan Officer. If you're setting up a Loan Officer with an NMLS ID, enter the NMLS ID here as well as here. Do you have to enter it in both? No. Is something going to break? No. But what's going to happen is if you don't enter it in both, um, every time that loan officer registers a loan, he or she is going to receive an annoying message telling them that they don't have a, a license number even though they do. So this is more of a, essentially like a best practice type thing. And then lastly, the system access tab, nothing you need to do as a delegated administrator. Um, this is a setting that would occur on the WIDA side. WIDA would control this. Highly unlikely that we would. It deals with uh, restricting IP addresses. So that's essentially the walkthrough start to finish for setting up a user. Again, if you have any questions or need a consultation, please contact WIDA. And thank you for viewing this presentation.